and welcome back. I focused on a bunch of theropod dinosaurs in my previous videos, and while carnivorous theropods are very cool and are the poster boys of the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World series, we mustn't forget that other dinosaurs exist, such as Herbivores are often extremely underappreciated, underrepresented, and sometimes downright laughed at by being cannon fodder for the carnivores. Which is interesting to say the least, because if you look at herbivorous animals in real life, uh, you know, hippos can fuck right- So, in this video, we will talk about a herbivorous dinosaur that was the literal living definition of fuck around, find out. Ankylosauridae is a diverse family of heavily armoured Ornithischian dinosaurs that lived as far back as the late stages of the early Cretaceous period between 122 million years ago to the late stage of the late Cretaceous period 66 million years ago, which was from the Baramian period all the way down to the KT extinction event in the Maastrichtian period. As stated earlier, there is a wide variety of species of Ankylosauridae within this family, so we will be focusing on the most popular and typically largest species. Ankylosaurus magniventris, which translates to fused lizard. Bro, I'm so hungry. What did mom make for dinner, bro? Oi! You can eat queso after I'm done, Christ sakes. It lived specifically between 68 to 66 million years ago, and this dinosaur was a literal living and breathing tank, with estimates coming in between 4.7 to 8.8 .8 tons, with an average length of 6 to 8 meters, and approximately 1.7 to 2 meters tall. And for my American viewers out there, it was practically as wide as an American school bus. No. Compared to the real-life Anki, Jurassic Park's Ankylosaur was extremely oversized. However, if we overlook the size, all the other details are relatively accurate. It was covered practically head-to-toe in osteoderms which were embedded into the skin, which vary from half an inch in diameter to almost 15 inches in length, with different shapes and sizes too. Compared to other Ankylosauridae, Ankylosaurus magniventris' osteoderms were rounder and smoother and tended to cover more of the skin. It was a herbivore, so it primarily ate lowbrows crops, feeding on plants which contained lots of fibres, such as woods, leaves and fruits, and to get some protein and calcium, it would snack on a small animal or two from time to time. And how can we forget about the tail club? The thing that is feared most among anything that hunts it. The largest tail club was around 19 and a half inches wide and over 23 inches in length, taking a semi-circular shape comprised of two large osteoderms on each side. We'll get into this ankle buster shortly. The ankylosaurus's head took the form of a triangular shape, being more wide than it was long, sporting a lot of angular geometry as it tapered towards the front of its face, with the peak of its skull at the back displaying two sharpish horn-like structures, with the speculated purpose being more likely for display and minor defence. This is clearly a very well-armoured, heavy and robust animal, but the question is, why did it need to evolve in such a way? As I just mentioned, Ankylosaurus magniventris is heavily armoured, covered in large, hard osteoderms and sharp hornlets. Fossil evidence suggests it also had cervical half rings, 
which are a type of armoured plating which surrounds the neck, often interlocking, creating a sort of U-shaped chain around the neck. This would have effectively covered the neck and bits of the upper shoulder region, allowing for pretty good protection against carnivores targeting the neck region. As for the rest of its body, these osteoderms would cover most of the back whilst still leaving some gaps for flexibility. These were still enough to essentially effectively ricochet bite attacks aimed at the body, with a large concentration of osteoderms being situated near the sides of the body. This is due to the fact that there is evidence of ankylosaurus engaging in intraspecific combat as a result of territorial behaviour and or slash dominance. Speaking of combat, the tail club of Ankylosaurus Magnaventris is really interesting because there's some evidence to suggest that Ankylosaurus did use its tail for a lot of defence against predators, such as Sue's Osteomyelitis, speculated to have formed as a result of an Ankylosaurus tail club strike. However, Recently, there's been a lot of research which suggests that Ankylosaurus's tail club was mostly used for intraspecific combat with other Ankylosaurs. Despite this, analysis on the biomechanics and bone structure of Ankylosaurus's body morphology demonstrated staggering numbers when it comes to how much force its tail club strikes could generate. Ankylosaurus magnaventris could generate between 7,281 to just under 14,400 newtons of impact force. To put this into perspective, that's the same as being hit by a Ford F-150 going over at 30 miles an hour, or being hit by a flying brick going at 264 miles an hour. Granted, the upper end of those figures are how much impact force it could physically generate and probably injure itself, but even half of that is enough to shatter bone. And if this was the impact force that ankylosauruses were commonly hitting each other with, ankylosauruses were definitely not at the top of a tyrannosaurus's menu and were most likely commonly avoided unless they were desperate, which is pretty much the same story with most other large and or heavily armoured herbivorous dinosaurs. Ankylosaurus magnaventris lived in Lake Cretaceous, North America. It was first discovered in 1906 in the infamous Hill Creek Formation of Montana by a paleontologist called Barnum Brown. The fossils discovered consisted of a couple of vertebrae of ribs, a shoulder griddle piece, some armour pieces, and a piece of the top of the skull, which is a pretty impressive find if you ask me. Ankylosaurus magnaventris lived amongst some of the most iconic dinosaurs to have ever lived, such as small troodontids, dakotaraptor, triceratops, tyrannosaurus rex, and edmontosaurus. I'm sure you've already realised why Ankylosaurus is built different when it had to live amongst these prehistoric titans. I gotta testify, come up in a spot looking extra fly, for the day I die, I'm a testify. So, there you have it. One of the, in my opinion, coolest dinosaurs to have ever lived on Earth. As April and May are rapidly closing in, it means that I am off for exam season, so I'll be away for a little while. But, fret not, I will return. I hope you wonderful people enjoyed this video, and special thanks to one of my close friends for the, uh, beheading of this poor fella. And apart from that, that's all I have for today. Until next time.